uh, hello, cog psych, co-student, peers, friends. <laughs> uh, today is my fifth Berea bite, and I'm going to be discussing cognitive errors in medical decision making. Uh, this is important because as a clinician, um, you need to confront that you have these cognitive biases uh, and able to make the right di uh, differential diagnosis and to ensure your patient's well-being. Everyone has cognitive errors, so addressing this fact with curiosity and without shame will make you a good medical provider. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to discuss the, the three most common cognitive errors in medicine. They all start with A, so they're the three A's, which is anchoring, availability, and attribution. So first, anchoring. Uh, anchoring is when you get fixated on a particular little set of uh, info, and so that causes you to think in a constrained, linear way. For this, to explain this, um, consider a 80-year-old man. Um, he loves golfing. He's a grandfather. He likes barbecuing with his grandkids. Um, so he goes to an outpatient clinic, and he reports feeling fatigued and um, uh, with low stamina. So the uh, clinician at the uh, clinic uh, says, oh, no, like, this, this man, maybe he's having problems with his heart. Um, maybe that's what's making him feel fatigued. So they sent him to the cardiologist. And the cardiologist does his workup, doesn't find anything wrong. Um, and the, uh, uh, the patient, um, Mr. Phillip, thinks that maybe it's a problem with his testosterone because he's seen uh, a video on, on the, his TV program about um, low testosterone in and older men. So he goes to the endocrinologist and the endocrinologist tests his testosterone levels and other hormone levels and they're all within um, uh, the parameter of what they should be. So uh, the doctor, the endocrinologist, goes in there and talks to Mr. Philip, and he's talking about golfing and talking about his kids and his grandkids um, and finds out that what Mr. Phillip means when he says that he's fatigued and has low stamina is that when he's walking around, um, his calf hurts, so he needs to sit down every once in a while. He can't make it very far without having to sit down, and so that's what he means by he's fatigued and he has no stamina. Mr. Phillip, if you review his chart, he just had knee surgery a couple months ago, so it's probably a result of that or... Uh, it's better being dealt with by um, PT rather than um, by these other specialties. So he goes back to the, um, the ortho orthopod who uh, did the surgery and is able to get the physical therapy he needs. And in a couple of weeks, he's back out there, like normal, playing his golf and playing with his grandkids. Um, <laughs> so everything's good. The, the cognitive error was caught. It just took a little bit. Um, for the second one, availability uh, error. So that's when you have strong influence from a dramatic case or an unusual case uh, and it's prominent in your memory. So it just pops up. You hear some symptoms and you're like, oh, this must be the diagnosis just because you, you were just reading about it or um, it's, it's one of the diagnoses that you, that you enjoy thinking about and thinking about the mechanisms of and whatnot. So for this, a, uh, for this example, consider a 40-year-old single mother. Uh, she has a, a child with a disability. She's a great mother. She's a great community member. Um, so she goes to her uh, primary care physician and says that she's been feeling really tired and also she's been losing weight. Um, and her stomach hurts, stuff like that. Um, the uh, physician diagnosed her with Crohn's disease and um, sends her off to a specialist for that. Thankfully, that specialist, when doing the initial interview, realizes that the problem is not Crohn's disease, 
and that um, Miss Lisa is actually suffering from um, a depressive episode, which is much more common than Crohn's. But because the initial physician had uh, just been reading an article about Crohn's disease, he immediately thought of Crohn's disease over depression um, uh, because of those symptoms. Uh, thankfully, it was caught in time. She was able to get the treatment that she needed, um, which is good because she was actively suicidal. So in this example, all is good too. The error is caught in time. Uh, number three is attribution error. And that's when you attribute findings to characteristic um, of the patient, like a social characteristic or how they look, um, and fail to um, consider this piece of information to be misleading. So for this example, let's think of a 20 year old college student, let's call him Bob. <laughs> Okay, so Bob, Bobby, he goes to the, uh, the university clinic and he complains of um, unspecified pain. The nurse practitioner who is uh, seeing him uh, looks over his chart and sees that he has a history of substance abuse. So thinks that uh, Bobby is um, seeking pain medication. So she kind of berates uh, the young man and starts asking him about his his alcohol use and his marijuana use and if he had a problem with pills so asking him about that um, and this young man's embarrassed so <laughs> he leaves and he uh, doesn't seek any further medical care until he gets a lot worse he ends up having bone cancer and um, he dies several months after his uh, graduation date so in this case, the cognitive error was not, um, was not realized. So uh, in medicine, that can have really terrible effects if you're not evaluating uh, your, your biases. So I'd like to pose a question to my forum mates. Have you or a family member experienced misdiagnosis or misunderstanding from a medical provider because of any of these errors I discussed today. And to conclude, I'd like to say that the existence of cognitive errors does that mean not mean that medical providers are lacking in morals or mean that they're bad at what they do. Um, everyone has cognitive biases, everyone has errors in their thinking. It's a direct result of just being a human being. Um, so denying the existence of uh, these errors in everyone in yourself and in the system as a whole is uh, unethical. So I, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you something to think about.